Thanks for waking up so early. I woke you up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's got a Texas speed motor. There we go. Oh, we're on take 69. It just told me. The and it's hotter right than a hoochie coochie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's gonna be the beginning of the video. Right there. You remember when I said it was gonna be a nice day? All right guys, so I figured it was time to do some driving on this channel. Now I wasn't gonna film this, but I decided, you know what? I haven't done any CJ7 content. It's pretty much my pride and joy. And it's supposed to be a pretty nice day. So we decided to go out to the hill country to go to a Cars and Coffee that's ran by Buda Gearheads. Bam! So there are some changes to the CJ7, but we're running a little behind, so let's just get there. Here we go. Thanks for waking up so early. I woke you up. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, I was, I was not feeling it this morning. It's been a long weekend. All right, remember, no vlogging and driving, especially when you got a shift. <laughs> so, we'll see you there. So we made it. Now there was a little bit of a scare there because I said it was gonna be a nice day today and then we started catching light sprinkles and light showers and we were like, well, what do we do if it starts raining? Nothing, just get wet and keep going. But anyways, we're here at the show. I got a taco truck, coffee guy stood him up. So there's nothing to really do about that. Um, still pretty early. We actually made really good time. I thought we were gonna get here kind of late. Started right at eight, um, but we made it. So let's check it out. Pure luck and fashion, a super luxurious, powerful car pulls up next to us and you go, that's my style that's right my there. That's my style right there. So this, for you guys that don't know, is a CT5V Blackwing from Cadillac. So super neat. I just recently learned about these. So to me, they're four door Corvettes. So you have a supercharged V8 in the front. You've got your nice wheels, big Brembo, super luxurious interior, but the big ticket item, it's got a manual gearbox. So. These cars are super badass. I recently test drove one at our local Cadillac dealership. And the one I drove had all of the carbon fibers. So it had a carbon fiber spoiler, rear diffuser. Um, so it was slightly different, but this is essentially what I drove. As you can see right here, the Blackwing badge is what makes these ultra special. When I pulled up, of course, somebody pulled up in a drift style C5 Corvette, excuse me, C6 Corvette. I spoke to him. He works at Texas Drift Academy. He's got this thing set up on YSFAB and a couple of other nice bits. Uh, Corvette is some, one of the cars that I looked at to try to build my drift car, but essentially we settled on Mustang. But yeah, super sick to see a drift car out here. Didn't expect it. Maybe next time I'll bring mine out. So this right here is Probably, quite possibly the king of muscle cars in 1969 Dodge Charger. And when I pulled up to it, I think he actually agrees it looks black, but it's kind of like purple, kind of like Del Delmonico. Yeah, it's deeper. It's really hard to catch it on camera, I think. But this thing is super nice. And as I actually pointed out, this is the second vehicle that somebody just bought. <laughs> and it's got the keys in it. And it's got the keys in it. <laughs> so yeah, down to my roots, I'm still a Mopar guy. Let's see here. Yep. An automatic transmission. Man, this is really nice. I think Omar would have really liked this if he would have been here. Super nice car. Super nice. As you can see, yep, just purchased tent tag. Check that out. Uh, so right behind me right there next to the 69 charger is a dodge charger daytona edition now we'll talk about this because my first mopar was a uh, 2006 dodge charger srt8 my silver one and i think it goes without saying that you can pick up one of these cars in really good condition for a really fair price i've been recently looking at the go mango daytona charger rts to see what they're going for and we're looking at sub ten thousand dollars and you get a 5.7 liter hemi you get all the style and you get your leather seats now the interior is a little dated for the 
years but again you get a really solid car for like again a fair amount of money so i think these cars are going to blow up here real soon and more people are going to start picking these up and making them nice so ashley specifically loves the the older cars she asked me to guess which car she wanted to see over here and i said well you know what a corvette is you're not really a porsche person so it's got to be this camaro Dude, good call. This is definitely what I'm into right here. Oh, it's got a Texas speed motor. There we go. Damn. MSD atomic air intake. Yeah. This is huge. This thing is wicked right here. This is this is my style pro touring build. What upper control arms does it have? I would assume it's Detroit speed, but I don't see the little purple sticker. But yeah, it's on got lower control arms upper control arms it's got sway bar in there i mean this whole engine air in, uh, intake pretty sure it's mated to look at this recaro's on the inside this is absolutely sweet it's probably got a t56 yo this is a nice car i blame milo for making me fall in love with resto mod camaros <laughs> yeah look at that we got the big wood brakes Bam, well, I mean, not big, but they're wheel wood, so it's been converted. Let's look at the front real quick. Yeah, there we go, four piston. No, there's six piston. Yeah. Six piston wheel woods up front. Billet specialty wheels front and back. Yeah, this thing's a unit, I promise you. <laughs> I promise you it's not a 250 in there. <laughs> yeah, that's wicked. Yeah, this has like, this is two I also like how they kept the vinyl roof. That looks really cool. Yeah, typically they, typically that's removed. So we just spoke about Chevy Bel Airs and their dashes recently. About how they wrap around and we came across this 55 here that is beautifully done uh, definitely one of my favorite cars i love tri-5 chevys i think you guys are trying to pick up on that i love american classic american cars american muscle cars um, but this is a really good example of just a beautiful restoration the seats the dash the door panels the shifter on the floor everything has been done just really nice real tasteful Around to the back, fitment on point. Yep, just an absolute beautiful ride. All right, now you know I'm not a humongous JDM guy, but I love all of the big JDM cars. We're talking RX-7s. My brother has like every single generation of an RX-7. We're talking Toyota Supra, Skylines, R32, 33s, 34s. But this thing definitely caught my eye, especially with a license plate that says 1.1 thousand wheel horsepower. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. Now, it's got some pretty, pretty decent sized tires in the back. Kind of definitely reminds me of like a roll race car. And holy Jesus, there we go. That is nicely done. That is super nice. Here we go. Two JZ. JZ engine, no shit. GTE, as you guys know, the legendary JDM motor. Got that sweet intake manifold. Looks like it's got a bigger turbo. Uh, precision turbo, so yep, that's definitely bigger. Koyo Rad radiator, so this thing's done up. Ashley just admitted to me that when she was younger, she absolutely loved El Caminos. <laughs> I just called her out. And there's a El Camino right here. But one car you just don't ever truly see, especially in this condition I'm about to show you, is a Ford Ranchero, which is basically the direct competition to the El Camino. And this is a really sweet example. It's also a GT with a Cobra Jet engine.
Oh, we're on take 69, it just told me. Um, but that's not what's, what we're gonna talk about right now. We're gonna talk about the Cybertruck because Ashley has never seen one. I think this close in person, no, right? No, 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 no. I mean, we practically live, live in Austin. I see these things almost every single day uh, on the road, on the highway, on the Tesla delivery trucks. Um, I'm not gonna lie, like, I don't hate it. I'm starting to understand the, uh, the dumpster references, uh, respectfully. <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually I don't hate it. It's really big. I didn't realize how big. I know on the road to me they always look small. Now yeah. I'm standing. Now that you, even you're standing next to it, I'm like this thing is kind of big. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Everything's so geometric. Yeah. I mean, the whole truck is yeah, sharp edges. What does that say right there? Foundation seat foundation series. I don't know what that means, but dude, I don't know who this guy is next to me, but. You know I'm a sucker for old Dodge trucks. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a clean second gen. Yeah. Got the roll bar in the back. That's super old school. All right, let's get back to the uh, Cybertruck here. Ashley's super intrigued. Yeah, this looks humongous too now that I'm standing yeah, I here. I've seen online where people say like a lot of things don't make sense, like the tail lights, like this is your brake light, oh, wow. which is like, I mean, yeah. the size of my fist, which is huge, by the way. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm still talking about the second gen because it is pretty clean for, I mean, being a second gen, you just don't see it in this point. I'm really digging the roll bar. It's got the door and a half look. It looks like it has a small lift or maybe a leveling kit, some nice big beefy tires. It's so simple that it just works. 4x4 four four off-road. I mean, these taillights are like faded. Like, he drives this thing. He uses it. Huge fan of the roll bars in the back. Like, the only thing I wish I had on my CRX when we did have it was the uh, Ram bar in the back. I think it's just a really clean look. It looks like you're, like, gonna go to a party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did we go far? Where's it going? Like, Pastor party? <laughs> yeah, like Alan Jackson's back there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's like, dude, that's the And it's hotter right than a hoochie-coochie. Yeah. It gets hotter than a <laughs> oh yeah that's gonna be in the beginning of the video right there oh man yeah I, I love second gen third gen being my favorite yeah third gen and fifth gen are my two favorite dodge trucks i just pulled up the weather it looks like uh 100 at 10 a.m for where we live and it's 9 30. <laughs> Uh, it's an hour drive home, so I mean, it's already starting to sprinkle and pick up. So we just got to decide what we're going to do. You remember when I said it was going to be a nice day? It's supposed to be a pretty nice day. <laughs> Texas said, hold my beer and watch this. The good news is we stopped for some chow. We didn't get Burger King or Taco Bell or anything like that. Uh, we stopped at a cafe here in Dripping. I'm getting wet. I'm about to get wet anyways, but yeah, we stopped at a cafe here in Dripping. Uh, got some good breakfast, and now we're gonna, I guess, face the storm. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh, your seat's way worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is gonna be a cold ride home! Come on, baby. There you go. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> from right here. Oh my gosh, we should just like wait it out into the trees. Now we should just get it over with. Get it over with, we're already soaked. I gotta turn around up there. Okay. It's chilly now. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I brought my jacket. <laughs> this isn't the drive I expected today. <laughs> the forecast kept changing. It's a Jeep though. Because I'm freezing. 
Not to mention we pulled over in a random neighborhood and these Miatas behind us were just at that car show too. <laughs> The rain has stopped, at least. Yeah, it's just freezing. Yes. It's just freezing cold. But yeah, that's why I keep this uh, random Bucky's hoodie that I bought in an emergency situation one time. Uh, in the Jeep. All right. All right, so the rain has seemed to stop for the meantime. I think we'll make it home just in time. So I'm not really too worried about it. Uh, but yeah, the reason why I wanted to bring the Jeep out is because really I just haven't been using it. In fact, in the last few years, the Jeep has been running and driving and I just haven't really taken the time to bring it out. And I thought, you know what, today's a perfect time to drive this Jeep. It is a ton of fun. It is a riot every time we drive it. And every time we drive it is some sort of adventure. Like today, it poured down rain on us. And I mean, it wasn't too bad, but we made it through. Uh, luckily, I have my emergency Bucky's hoodie because it got really cold and that's like really opposite for Texas because it's always really hot. Um, but yeah, we've had a lot of fun driving the Jeep and taking it out of the house and actually enjoying it. It's kind of one of the main goals I want to do this fall with it. Um, in the winter, it does get pretty cold in Texas. I don't have a hard top anymore. So I want to go ahead and just use the Jeep for what it is and that's the Adventure Mobile. Um, she's definitely not perfect. On the drive, the reason we stopped and the reason we're here is because the wipers stopped working. Of course they work on camera. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. Off, don't yeah, the save the juice. Oh, they died. They died. They died. Okay. Anyways, that, that's the reason we stopped. But this this wiper motor is the OEM one from 1983. So that's something else I'm gonna have to obviously work on. But other than that, the Jeep drives really good. So that's really what today's video was about. It was just about going out with Ashley, having some fun in our CJ7, and just really enjoying our time with the vehicle and actually driving it. Um, we, it's about an hour one way, and it's really not too bad. We have a little portable speaker, we're bumping our tunes, and just kind of enjoying the weather. Now, I was right though, it wasn't so hot that it was miserable in the Jeep, that's usually the problem. Yeah. It just rained on us, so. Yeah. Now we look crazy. The most <laughs> unusual thing for Texas, it to be cooler in the summer and us not in the middle of a drought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look how green it is. Like, this is yeah. why I wanted to come out here, too. Mine is this trash can over here. But like, everything is so green out here, and it's never like this. So, it's a good, it's been a good. I'm happy. But, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I'm going to cut it right here. We're going to do more adventures like this in the Jeep. We've already got a bunch of plans we spoke about. Some emergency stuff we need in the Jeep because, again, we have no top. Um, <laughs> maybe a little portable cooler, stuff like that. We got the speaker system down. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna do more adventures like this in the CJ7. There's plenty to see here in Texas, in Central Texas, in the hill country. And we're definitely planning on finally taking this thing to go wheeling at Hidden Falls Adventure Park. So, I need to go ahead and dial a few more things in. But other than that, man, I think I'm ready. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you tap in, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment below and let me know what adventures or what areas you know of in Texas that you want me, want me to hit up in the CJ7. And until next time, guys, peace out. No way, the cyber truck is back. Are you excited? <laughs> There's another one, what? <laughs> this one's blue! <laughs>